Hi there. In this video, we address reaction coordinate diagrams, or RCDs, a type of graph used in chemistry to represent and analyze the connection between reactions' mechanistic steps and their associated energies. To take some steps toward being able to achieve that learning outcome, in this video you'll learn to identify the features of an RCD, connect those features with the chemical concepts they represent, and draw an RCD. Let's take a reaction mechanism and start with some key concepts. So first, when molecules are mixed together in a liquid, they'll randomly move and collide. In this animation, one type of molecule is added first, represented by the blue spheres, and then a second type of molecule is added, represented by the smaller red spheres. A reaction starts when a random collision between species occurs with the appropriate orientation and sufficient energy for bonds to break and form. Those starting species are called reactants or starting materials. Sometimes there's just one. We can zoom in on a successful collision and look at what's happening in the reaction mechanism. In this example, acetone, a ketone, is reacting with hydroxide. When the two starting materials collide with the appropriate orientation and sufficient energy, a new bond forms between the hydroxide's oxygen atom and the carbonyl carbon while simultaneously the carbon-oxygen pi bond breaks. The product of that first step is called a reaction intermediate. In reaction intermediates, all bonds are fully intact or fully formed. Intermediates typically last long enough that they can be detected and can sometimes be isolated. They are typically less stable, so higher in energy, than the overall starting materials or products of a reaction. In the next step of a reaction, the negatively charged oxygen atom collides with the hydrogen atom on a water molecule. In this step, an oxygen-hydrogen bond forms while a hydrogen-oxygen bond breaks simultaneously, leading to the final products of this reaction. Now we can locate those species on a reaction coordinate diagram. The reaction coordinate diagram has energy on the y-axis and the reaction coordinate on the x-axis. The x-axis is sometimes also called the reaction progress, but keep in mind that all reactions are reversible in principle, so the reaction coordinate diagram can and should be interpreted both from left to right and from right to left. The starting materials are placed on the left of the RCD by convention. The intermediates are higher in energy than the starting materials and products. Each reaction step goes through a higher energy point called the transition state. The transition state is a part of the reaction when the bonds are breaking and forming. These transition states are higher in energy, maxima on the RCD, are short-lived, measured in femtoseconds, and cannot be isolated. The transition state structure is drawn with dashed lines where bonds are breaking and forming, a partial positive, partial negative charge to represent charge density on each atom as it's gaining or losing uh, electron density. In this example, the transition state has a partial pi bond and a partial sigma bond. The transition state is usually labeled by enclosing it in square brackets and adding a transition state symbol, plus showing the overall charge on all the species. The transition state is not necessarily the halfway point between the starting materials and products of that step. There's a hypothesis that the transition state bears the greater resemblance to the less stable species, reactant, or reactant intermediate products of that elementary step, the species that are closest to that transition state in energy. This hypothesis is called the Hammond postulate. In this example, both transition states most closely resemble the intermediates, the closest species to those transition states in energy. The activation energy is the energy between the starting materials of a step and the transition state of that step. When we speak about reactions occurring when they have sufficient energy, it's this activation energy that is required. Overall, the number of transition states represents the number of steps in the reaction mechanism. Solvent is one of the reaction components that is almost always present in all parts of a reaction mechanism, but that we don't often draw. Not drawing the solvent simplifies the drawing of the reaction, but can mean that we neglect or forget to analyze its roles. Solvent plays important roles in stabilizing or destabilizing species, making reactions more or less feasible. At this point, you should be able to label a reaction coordinate diagram and explain what each part represents. You can almost draw one, and we'll be able to do that in just a minute. To draw an RCD, start by drawing the reaction mechanism. 
then draw and label the axes for the RCD itself. Use quantitative experimental data or qualitative knowledge about the reaction to rank the energy of each species involved. We already know that the transition states are highest in energy overall. Often, not all the information will be available to you, so in those cases, make your best guess. In this example, the carbonyl bond in the starting ketone is stronger, more stable, and therefore lower energy than the two carbon-oxygen sigma bonds in the products. Keep in mind that all reactions are reversible, in principle, so the reaction coordinate diagram can and should be inter interpreted both from left to right and right to left. This is the situation for chemical equilibria, where reactions don't stop when the reactants have formed products. They continue to collide and react with other molecules in solution. We can analyze the reacting species, transition states, intermediates, activation energies, etc., just as we did for the reaction in the forward direction. Using a principle called microscopic reversibility, the reaction in the reverse direction is actually follows the same path as a reaction in the forward direction. So at this point, you should be able to draw and label reaction coordinate diagrams for a reaction mechanism. A next step would be to use the RCD to compare reaction mechanisms. That's for another video.